favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Eck tested positive today. So he was going to be in, but he tested positive. So um, Kirill uh, is in as it sits right now. Um, Greenway's in as it sits right now. Duhame is in as it sits right now. Um, after that, um, that's it. That's it, Dean Evison. Your team barely plays games, but no lack of news, notes, uh, reckless speculation on a reckless speculation Thursday. Welcome into Judd's Hockey Show. Judd's Olgad, of course. Declan Goff, of course. Um, all right, let's uh, let's take this uh, piece by piece, Declan Goff. Kirill Kaprizov being back is fantastic news because when he got hit in Boston on what was definitely a cheap shot, um, it looked bad. I couldn't tell if it was um, a shoulder, a concussion, if it was a combination of both. But I think the fact that the plan is to have Kirill back in the lineup tomorrow against the Anaheim Ducks uh, has to be considered from a wild standpoint. Absolutely great news. Yeah, big time news. Uh you know, I, I will say as much as it stinks that the Wild didn't play hockey, I think you can make a case that they benefited the most from not having these games on the schedule. They had a lot of guys banged up. COVID's kind of still obviously here and it isn't going away either. Obviously, Joel Erickson neck testing positive on Thursday, who was supposed to be in the lineup for Friday. That means Victor Rask now has to step into the lineup and, and potentially play significant minutes, which is a topic in its own right. But uh, Kirill's injury at what we thought it was going to be against Trent Frederick would look like a, you know, as we speculate on injuries, possible separated shoulder. Was it a concussion? He went to the boards very awkwardly. It was hobbled off the ice. He's a tough SOB. There's no question about that. But I think it was obviously concerning watching him basically hobble off there and kind of not knowing the timetable when it first was he won't be playing for a while. Well, mm-hmm. he's obviously uh, a pretty strong dude, so he's he's going to be able to be back in the lineup for the Wild on Friday. That is great news for Minnesota. Uh, they had the Anaheim Ducks on Friday, and then some Monday matinee hockey. Judd, I'm all about this matinee hockey. Uh, this is one of the few things the NHL is starting to do right. I know at yeah, Willie O'Ray uh, 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 day is that day. Is, Willie O'Ray day is that day for MLK Day, so that's awesome. I love seeing some matinee hockey. But most importantly, uh, too, the Minnesota Wild kind of get – their roster for the most part back here, which is important for them. I'm excited. Glad there's some hockey to talk about. Do we have uh, from practice? Do for, I think at Tria? Do we have leaking lines? Have lines gotten out? Do Do we have an idea? I, like it feels so long between games. I'm starved. I'm starved right. here. So like I'm sure it's Zuccarello, Kaprizov, Hartman. But um, so Boldy was sent to the taxi squad, not the not the minors. So he is he can be moved up. Correct. Rossi's yeah. been sent down like and, and Pitlick's gone now claimed mm-hmm. off the waiver wire by the just woefully God awful <laughs> terrible cup. It's a uh, Montreal Canadians. Do you have um, line constructions at all for me? So I do know the wild had it. It was an optional practice on Thursday. I we believe the li- practices for we got to put them through the paces. I know. I'm I'm with you. Uh, I don't believe we have the line heathens, as uh, our friend Jesse Pierce likes to say, who usually provides it for the audience Jesse, because she, she she's all over the line heathens, and so many people love adding her for those exact reasons. Uh, no lines that I can find, at least digging up right now. But I'm guessing, yeah, that top line will stay intact yep. uh, with Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and Ryan Hartman. Um, and I believe at first, you know, it was Eck was going to slide in back with Felino and Greenway. That was, I believe, also reported. That was the original plan, that being the Wilds kind of go-to line for the better part of the last year now. Um, but now I'm kind of curious on who else has to slide in. Because, if man, if Matthew Boldy has to play with Victor Rask and his and his sludging skates there, I'm, I'm, Boldy will I'm probably very play upset. with Fiala on the other wing then. Is that True. right? And, yeah, that, and, that and then who's the center for that line? Is it because uh, I, I would take it that Rossi's not being called back up. So no. I, so would it be would it be um, Goudreau, Frederick Goudreau, Rask? Well, wait, would, would would Rask have to play then? Because if Goudreau, so if, if the third line is or technically third line, I guess if the third line is going to be 
Mm, yeah, but Goudreau might have to kick up to the second line. You might be right. I, I don't like this. I already don't like it. Why couldn't Eck have gotten why couldn't Eck have gotten the COVID back about a week and a half ago? Well, there's a lot of questions that we I wish we could answer about COVID that we can't so, uh, so that upsetting. we can't seem to seem to figure out. But uh but at least look, Kaprizov's back. I think that's great news. Um I know Galagoski, I think, is still a little bit questionable. But regardless, um, you know, the Wild are getting some of their core players back, which is which I think is great. So they were Brodeen, they basically had to play their Iowa roster. Spurgeon and Brodeen not back. And and I, I've heard there's very there is very much a concern about how long Brodeen is going to be out, which could be a major setback because he is their as much as I like Spurge, Brodeen's the best defenseman. All right, here we go. Here's what I got. This was, I believe, the lines uh, nice yesterday before Eck tested positive. Okay. 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 So so it was Kaprizov, Hartman, Zuccarello, yep. Greenway, Eck, and Felino. The third line was Boldy, Goudreau, Fiala. And then Thank the fourth you. line was Duhame, Sturm, uh, Connor Dewar. So with Eck out, I don't know if Goudreau will slide up to the Eck spot. And I don't Rask know if gets in there. I don't know if Boldy, Goudreau, Fiala stay together and Rask goes there, but. That is the kind of million dollar question that they'll have to figure out now that Eck has tested positive. Write this down. Rask will be the center for Boldy Fiala tomorrow. Oh God, though, I, feel St- I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to move Sturm. I think they love. I think they like Sturm where Sturm yeah. is. Um, I agree. Which, by the way, I've just grown comfortable with. Um, I, As I I've told you, I, look, he's, he's sort of lashing out, but I'm not. Lashing he's out a nice anymore. player, Judd. He's a nice player, and I know we wanted him to get more. I they know who he is. And Nico Sturm brings some nice speed and nice size of the wild, but I, I agree. He's not a finisher. He's not going to be someone that plays above a bottom six. It's just not who he's going to be. Uh, Cam Talbot, you said, is back at practice. Is that correct? That is correct. Cam Talbot Lower was uh, back at practice after uh, sustaining that injury uh, during the Winter Classic. Now I will imagine that Capo Kakinen still gets the net uh, on Friday against the Ducks since uh, this is his basically Cam Talbot's first practice back in almost two weeks. Um, yep. But, uh, yes, Capo Kakinen, who has played well, man, with Cap- with Cam Talbot's absence, and uh, I think it's making a case that maybe he is going to stick around here and be an NHL goaltender. I'm, I'm going to make you dean for a day. Okay. If you're dean for a day, because uh, I, I think you're right. I don't think they're going to rush Cam back, and so Capo gets the net tomorrow against the Ducks team. By the way, that's good now. Like, they, they're good. Um, so if you are the head coach, of this team. And let's say Capo comes out again and plays strong on on Friday night against the Ducks. Do you when Talbot is set to go, do you so do you start to go to um not a true rotation perhaps that might be too strong, uh but do you start to work in more starts for Capo um based on how he has played these past two games and as I said, this would also be contingent on him playing well Friday. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, Talbot's know back at that before. Yep, Tal- Talbot's back at practice. Obviously, today you can make a case that his first start could be Monday against Colorado if he's indeed rehabbing properly. His legs are being fresh, but um, you know the Wild do have back to backs home and homes against or home and aways, excuse me, against Chicago this time next week, Friday, Saturday. So obviously, some Capo's not going to start both of those in the back to back. Yeah, I, I think in general, I think this has kind of given them a case to play Capo Kakinen more. Uh, Capo's barely played this season when he's been playing. He's actually been successful. There's only one start that he's allowed more than two goals this season. I think we kind of forget about that because Cam Talbot's in net so so uh, so often. Uh, but I think with Capo Kakinen starting to take the reins here, I mean, look, they played their Iowa roster, and they played a, a, a Capitals team who I believe was coming off the heels of a back-to-back, so they retired. But still, Capo Kakinen saved them uh, in both yeah. those games. Those were th- those were four points the Wild earned mostly because of their goaltending because they were so injured. And if, and sometimes your goalie has to be your best player. Uh, so I thought if, if I, I think if Capo Kakinen is indeed taking this next step that you would you would hopefully be able to see him in net more. I think this is a good thing for the Wild. They, they needed someone to not have Cam Talbot out there for 75 basically percent of their starts, which is kind of where the math was close to tracking. And if Capo is indeed taking the next step here. This is good. You don't have to go buy a goalie on the on the open market. Um, that this is good things. I think Capo Kakin has earned some more trust in the Wild Faithful. I would like to see him play more. Um, I also don't think that. I don't think Talbot's as good as they think at times. 
Like I like Talbot and, and I do think that he is your top guy. So I'm not trying to take that away, but there's times where it feels like they think that Cam Talbot is this veteran who has to play and Cam Talbot's up and down at times. Yep. Um, and so, so do, do I think that Kapo Kakinen is like the slam dunk next guy up long-term top goalie when Cam Talbot's gone? No, I don't. Do I think that Kapo Kakinen is a good player? Yes. Do I think that there is a, like this huge gap from Cam Talbot's up here and I'm, I'm talking consistently because all, all goaltenders go through hot and cold streaks decks. Yep. But I don't feel that Cam Talbot's up here and Capo's down here. I feel like on mo- on the ordinary days when when both are just playing good hockey that they're fairly close. I put Talbot a little bit above Capo, but I don't think it's this huge difference. Um, and you know, here's the thing that we have to be prepared for: as little as the Wild is playing right now because of COVID and you know, games in Canada being canceled, which by the way, it's getting ridiculous why they didn't play the jets here this week. i still don't get, um, but that's not my decision. And I have no say the reality is at some point in time, we're going to see a new schedule. And I understand that they're going to get the Olympic break back to play games, but the Olympic break was like what, two and a half weeks or so yeah. there's going they're They're going to have to jam games in um, at some point. And I don't know if they're going to back up the playoffs too, but it's very clear that at some point soon, you can't just ride a goaltender. Like you can't just be like, oh, Cam Talbot's the guy. You don't understand. Um, you will drive that guy into the ground. And by the time the playoffs start, he will be melted. So right. so there becomes this incredibly important dance that's going to have to be done, no matter what you think of Capo or Cam, that gives both of them regular playing time. And, and so I'm with you. I do I'm not saying now that, hey, they're flip-flop, it's Capo's net, but I am saying both of them are going to have to play. And and look, you know, Dex, th- this has played out in part because of the Wild not playing games and other teams are playing, but they're now what? Third or fourth in the division? I think they're fourth now, right? Yeah. But, but it, it's games in hand. But my point right. is, if you play anybody, if you play a goalie too much, and those games in, in hand become L's because that goaltender is tired and starting to struggle, you're not going to mm-hmm. get those points. So right. so this is a tough division. The Wild is, I think, because the Pacific's not that good. The Wild is 1,000% a playoff team, but I think that goaltending structure and that goaltending juggling is going to become incredibly important because when you're playing back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back, which they're going to have to do at some point, yeah. Um, You've got to maximize those points. And I don't think just saying we are relying on Cam Talbot. And I don't think that, that the Wild's dumb enough to do that, but that can't be done. And so this no. is going to get to be a really interesting sort of equation of how you play hmm. your goaltenders to maximize getting points back from games that you should have played but haven't. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the splits so far, uh, Cam Talbot has played 24 games. Kapo Kakinen has played 10 games. You do the math here on the fly. That means Cam Talbot has basically appeared in 70% of the games so far this season, um, which is too much. That's a 70-30 split. I can't be having that. Um, Even with Talbot, if he was playing even better, I can't be really having that kind of ratio. I think in a healthy world, it's a 60-40. I think it's a 60-40 split between your your number one goalie and your backup goalie. Um, And now that Kapo Kakinen is starting to play more, I think that's that's kind of good. It's got to be closer to that. It has to be closer to a 50-50 split, 55-45. Um, look at me doing math on the fly here. Uh, you can actually start through. to Go Huskies. yeah. You can actually start to make a case that Capo Kakinen has earned the right to play more. And, and we're going to figure out here soon what the hell they're going to do with the February schedule. They're going to have to obviously announce some revising to it. Uh, yeah. Is the regular the season now going to like yep, the rest of the, the schedule? Like right. this is, is the regular yep is the regular season going to continue more as the playoffs get dragged out longer because of this process I think we're all leaning towards a yes on that it's it's a fluid situation um but I think in general you going forward you know as it stands on January 13th you have to go to a 60 40 55 45 split and I I lean more Talbot because he's the veteran and they trust him more sure um but Capo, I think taking the next step in his development is big for the Wild. I think it it answers a lot of questions and doesn't have to be something you have to go find a need for in in the offseason. Yeah, and and that split too at, at times 
might have to be more evenly distributed than even you said, depending on the schedule. Because I mean, at some point in time, they're just gonna have to cram games in here. This is why this is why I don't I don't like this Canadian thing. They're not playing because they won't allow fans in in the stands. I'm telling you, uh, the Wild was supposed to play at the Jets on Tuesday, Dex. If the bill, if the X was not occupied that night, that game should have been ma- mandated to be played here. You need to. I understand that the Jets want their home games, gates, and that's absolutely fair. Uh, but at some point in time, for the quality of the product, you need to just play the games. The Boldy Rossi first impressions. Yeah, I'll start by saying this: it was almost exactly what I expected. You, I, I thought that, I thought that, and. I think we talked about this last week. Boldy would look prepared, ready, and through no fault of his own, this is not criticizing Marco Rossi. We expected it to be a little bit bumpier for him. Did anything surprise you about the first impression from two of the, uh, or not two of, the top two prospects in this organization? Yeah, no, it did not. Uh, I, I thought Boldy made an immediate impact. Rossi is Rossi's game's there. It's just it's not at the level that Boldy's game is yet. And that's just because of Boldy playing a little bit more and having a little bit more experience playing in North American hockey. Um, you know, I, I think Rossi will eventually be back up here. The, the I think, and I know Michael Russo, friend of the show, loves to at these people, and I, I know the at mentions just destroy his uh, his his mental state. But you know, they sent Boldy back to the taxi squad for cap reasons, similar for Rossi. Now, remember that Rossi, if he plays in more than 10 games in the NHL, that burns the first year of his contract. Boldy's first year has already been burned. He had burned last year, so he's in the second year of his of his contract, no matter how many games he, like he played. Like Like the pre last year. Yes, so so don't, in terms of the cap math and trying to figure out, the, 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 Boldy does not apply here. And the Rossi, Rossi, situ, Rossi situation does warrant some discussion. If he plays in more than 10 games, do they want to burn that first year? And they have to figure that part out. And Rossi's not on the pra- on the taxi squad though, right? He got sent, but he got flat out sent back down. I I thought he got sent down, and then Boldy for sure got put on this COVID taxi squad. But I I thought that they made it the move to send Marco back to Des Moines. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, which I which I think is totally fair, um, Marco Rossi is going to be really good, and I really like him. I'm on the fence about like how, how much I need to, how much he needs to be here right now with sure. Boldy. I think he needs to be here and I think he needs to play. Yeah. I think Matthew Boldy is a national hockey league power forward who I want to see. I don't think there's a slow cook here. I think you need to find him playing time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think Boldy has done enough to not go back to Iowa. Uh, Rossi will, no, it, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, Look, I, I don't like Victor Rask playing significant minutes uh, for the Wild. I don't want it at all. They you know they they cleared some space by sending him down, no one claiming him from the waiver wire, which makes a hell of a lot of sense. They don't want to be on the hook for all of his cap hit. Um, but I, I think Rossi most likely, and you know we could possibly write this down on an addition of Mackey and Judd, will play in those 10 games. I think he'll play eventually when it's all said and done by game 82 of this season. We'll probably play 10 games with the big club. Um, now to, to ask you a question that you might know the answer of let's, if he plays under the 10, the playoff games don't count, right? Like the playoff games, I don't think account oh, to I that, that up. I don't 10 know games. For sure. I think I don't you're know. right, but I'm not positive. I th- I think I, yeah, I think I'm right on that. I could be, I could be spitballing, but I don't think the playoff games are attached to that. Mm-hmm. Now, if the wild make the playoffs, I'd be shocked pending injury. If, if Marco Rossi's not on that playoff roster and and playing significant minutes. Um see I wouldn't, I, I, uh, wouldn't be entirely I wouldn't be entirely shocked by that. I don't know. I I watched him um I, I went to the game on was that Saturday night? Yeah. Against yeah. the Capitals. And I watched him pretty closely and I'm going to say I'm very he's a talent. So I am not saying that he he is in no way not a talent, okay? So hear me clearly. For the now I'm on the fence about if he belongs here yet. Um, he does things that I say, that I saw that definitely translate really well. Mm-hmm. It's a really slight guy right now. Um, and and look, I mean, it's what we thought. Boldy, physically, mentally, all of those to me is ready. 
Yep. Marco Rossi's a borderline guy mentally and physically. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't think that you're going to ruin him. I just don't know how much can be expected from him. What what was the thing to you that stood out about Rossi maybe not being ready just from seeing him in person? What was was there something about his game that you noticed this right away just from an eye test being up there that you noticed about Rossi? Yeah, physically, I don't think he is. I I think the I think when you get to especially the playoffs, which are hell. I mean, they're great. I love him as a fan, but they are hell to play in. Um, I think he would get really and and now he's got some skills that could avoid this a little bit, but I think he would get abused. I really do. Um, now it depends on where he plays, but here's the thing, Dex, and, and this is where, and I, I've got a conversation, um, for our next topic in my notes about this. Here's the thing that's different old school. You would say, Oh, Marco Rossi, of course he'll play and he'll play fourth line, right? Like, you know, dial down the pressure on Marco Rossi, Bill Guerin. And he's talked about this before. And I think Dean as well. And I, I agree with this. They don't want to take a guy who is a top six guy eventually or for sure top nine and put him on the fourth line. Right. And so, so the question, so like the Matthew Boldy, in my opinion, should have played in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Garen and Dean think, okay, where are we going to play them? And, and if we have to play them on the fourth line, we'd almost rather not play them. Now you can debate that. Like this is a good topic to discuss and it's a conversation and ultimately it's a debate, but when it comes to Rossi, where I think he should probably play now in high pressure games isn't a place where they want to play him. And that's the issue. They, they want to pop him in like they did with Boldy right now, which is top six guy, in my opinion. Yeah. So anyway, that's the conundrum. And that's where I think that there's a difference of opinion probably about Rossi's role right now. Yeah. I think that's probably accurate. Let, let him play significant minutes in Iowa at this point. There's no, um, there's no significant reason to 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 rush him back up here. Uh, I I think eventually, as I told you, I, I think eventually he ends up playing more than those ten games with this club. Um, but you don't have to rush him up. Boldy's clearly ready. Like uh, just from watching on TV, you got to see him in person. Boldy is ready to contribute. It's it's clear. Um, but Rossi's going to take a little bit more time, and that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. And the other the um, other discussion about this too that's intriguing is this one. When, if you can get the right center, if you do a line that has Boldy and Fiala on the wings and Goudreau might be this guy. I don't, I don't love him. I don't dislike him. But mm -hmm. my point is then I think your line just distribution for now for the now becomes obvious. Hartman, Kaprizov, Zuccarello is first line. Boldy, Fiala center is the second line. And that Eck line truly becomes a grind line. That's really yeah. good at that. Um, cause right now, cause right now I keep say, saying the Eck line to me is really the second line, but I think if you could distribute Fiala Boldy, cause here's, here's my thing. It's my belief. At least Matthew Boldy is a better player right now than Greenway. I think he's a more talented player than Greenway. Yep. And, I, odds are he's going to have a more impactful career than Green. I I, think better I don't like Jordan Green. I'm not a big Jordan Greenway stand by any means. I I don't know if I can say I don't know if I can go there yet. Okay, I think from what I've seen, he's a better player. Okay, but but I would not. But if you get the right center with Fiala and Boldy, I would have I would appreciate going into the playoffs with a distribution of, of your top three lines that at, that makes the Eck line a clear third line. They're going to play a ton. Yep. Uh, but I think it would make the right now. I'm mean, like Fiala is consistently on a third line. Mm -hmm. I'd prefer. And now he, he has to play consistently as well. But I think with Boldy, I think it, I think that might be a good pairing. Yeah. yeah I'm just guessing here. I'm spitballing, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I think if, uh, if, if Rossi's game was further along, I mean, I mean, I almost said a word. You, you, you could make a really nice case that, that down the middle, you'd have Eck, Rossi and Hartman. Um, or I should say Hartman, Rossi, Eck, because uh, mm -hmm. then Rossi and Boldy can play together, Fiala on that other flank, and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, damn, that that actually is a lot talented, and that on paper that sounds like a lot of fun. All I right. just don't think Rossi's game is going to be probably to where we'd like it to be um, unless he takes a significant step forward by that time. That's why, you know, the, the Thomas Hurdle discussion is fun because, I mean, my God, you plug in Thomas Hurdle, and now you're really, let's play. But 
what can you give up? What was it going to cost to get him? There's there's a possibility that it's just it, it's too much. Um, the Walsh man, my Walsh that idea as it always does my reckless wild trade. I got it blew up. I, I tried to back from that. I know. I tried to warn you. I, I know. Didn't even pile on you, but I tried to warn you. <laughs> Look, it's a goaltender who could be your guy for a long time. I'm pretty sold on that, okay? And I'm not trading Boldy, and I'm not trading Rossi. Um, if you had a chance to keep Hurdle, I'd be far more open to a discussion of a significant trade. I'm not doing a rental for this season. No. Sorry I agree. about that. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm not doing that, but you know what I am do- doing? I am doing a weight loss program that has worked magic for me. Thanks to my friends at Livia weight control centers down 30 plus pounds, 240 When I started all wow. jowly, all fat, six chins, pants to big pants that fit tight. Mm. That's stunk. big breezers, big breezers on me now down 30 plus pounds around 208. I'm down to a 36 inch waist jean. I'm not as jowly. I got some old man face here going, but I'm That's not okay. as bad. And I want you to join me on the I did it, the Livia. I did it eight week challenge, your first eight weeks for free. Just as an example, I lost 26 pounds in my first eight weeks. You can lose 26 pounds for free. Heck, you could lose more. Offer and soon call today, 855 go Livia. Livia, L I V E A, L I V E A dot com. Check out the website, give them a call, check in, do a consultation. I'm going to tell you right now. This program is as easy as it gets, and you will take the weight off. And imagine springtime coming and saying, it's the new me for 2022. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. all those all those spring and then summer clothes fit you. Livia.com. Um, I want to talk about the the fourth line and line distribution. Sure. And and I want to get your thoughts on this because I find it to be, I find it to be very interesting and again it's how things have changed because we used to just take young guys or players that we flat out really didn't like and stick them on the fourth line okay it's the decision to waive pitlick who they picked up off waivers at the start of the season from nashville and here's the intriguing thing the decision was made because connor dewar has played well he's got good speed he's you know what I, i i mean i watch him and I think he is a little bit comparable to Duhame in the fact he's not going to knock your socks off, but he fits his role really well. Mm-hmm. But, De- but Dex, what I find intriguing here is it again speaks to the fact that that Garen and Everson very much have a plan for the distribution of players. And it's not just, uh, well, we'll stick this guy here and stick this guy there. They got Pitlick because they thought that he could do that. He, he had a decent skill set and would be a good bottom six guy i think what they learned is he's not a great fit there right he's got speed and i think he's a good player I, and he's I don't got think skill he's yeah and he's got yeah. skill right he's got speed and skill but they definitely found out you know what we thought it wasn't true and instead of trying to force it and find different roles which is by the way what the old wild did right they tried mm-hmm. to force things like oh we'll move this guy here and then he's got all this they said no we're done here um it's a little, it's a small thing and it's sort of a hidden thing, but I really appreciate the fact that this roster is being structured and built in a way that goes far beyond. We're just going to try and force what we think are the most talented guys. It's yeah. actually, we're going to do what we think is best for the team. And, and I've never thought about it in this context before Declan, but it's, it was part of the flaw with the old regimes. Part of their flaw was, Zucker drives us crazy and he's a fourth line guy, but if we keep playing him and look, Jason could score goals like Jason and Jason was a nice player, but I always thought to myself, does he truly fit on what you're trying to do? Um, Pitt looks a guy that they could have held on to and they could have milked and he can score. I mean, hell hat trick, right? Against Kraken. He had a hat trick, Um, but they didn't. They said doers a better fit for what we're trying to do. Bottom six, fourth line. I think that's a really important but small thing. Yeah, I think it's I think it is important. I, a lot of fans uh, were a little, I think, perplexed. I know a couple of buddies of mine were confused why Pitlick was placed on waivers. You know, why does Billy not like him? You know, does he not fit what they want to do? He's got obviously has very good offensive prowess, and look, he scored goals when he's played. It, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of Ryan Donato's tenure when he was with the Wild. Like Donato clearly has an offensive game. Yeah. 
Yeah, I but like it. and 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 they when they played him when they acquired him at the trade deadline, Donato put up some points because he was playing decent minutes and he put up a nice amount of points. But then I think once you kind of realize, oh, this guy isn't really all that good. Is his two hundred foot game? I should say isn't all right. that good. I shouldn't say he's not good. His two hundred foot game isn't all that good, and he Bingo. doesn't fit what we want. Great. Point. And and I think um, I think Pitlick is kind of in that same bin. Um, now Montreal is such a dumpster fire. If I'm Rem Pitlick and I'm Montreal, play Rem Pitlick in your top six. There's not you have absolutely nothing to lose playing him in your top six, and there might be something that you can build around there. But for the wild side, he was log jammed. He was just log jammed, and also he wasn't fitting what they wanted from a bottom six player. Mm-hmm. And if this was a team in developmental mode, I'd be upset that Pitlick isn't getting a chance to crack the lineup. But this team isn't in a developmental mode. Um, they're in they're in a chance to win a cup right now, and they're in a chance to compete for a serious playoff contention. So, look, I don't think you should be splitting hairs and and getting all up in arms at oh, how can they not find time for Rem Pitlick when other things are working for this wild team right now. I wouldn't fret too much about it. I do think he's got an Nice little career. He he was a good player at the Gophers, but don't look too much into the fact of why isn't why didn't Billy give him enough chance here? He just didn't fit what they were looking for. Yep, and I I think in the case of a guy like Duham or Dewar, they definitely do fit that role. And and to me, it's like a puzzle. Pitlick didn't fit. That doesn't mean that he couldn't be a decent piece of a puzzle elsewhere. What it meant was he didn't fit this one. I I like the construction ideas of lines and the uh roster do you know what else well both of us like <laughs> we like our chill boys Declan why oh, don't God, you do all... why don't you recount the winter classic again because I think that is my <laughs> I think that might be the the best example of not just comfort but warmth in the face of a frigid day oh I had uh my performance brand on I had the long underwear on that bamboo fabric keeping me nice and warm and toasty and and you know even though it's uh it certainly has warmed up since those negative 30 20 degree temperatures during the winter classic because uh, it's now nice and a balmy 30 degrees on that doesn't matter even though it's warmed up I still take my bamboo fabrics I like to be comfortable out there right I don't like the bunching I don't like this nope. looseness it will change your complete mindset of how boxer boxers or briefs are consumed. It's usually one or the other. It's black and white. I, I'm a briefs person. I'm a boxers person. Personally, before Chill Boys, I was always a boxers person. I don't like briefs. These are not necessarily briefs. I can't really, I can't really define it until you try a pair on and then you understand what I've been talking about. Chill Boys. They're for your boys. They're for all the boys. Go get your pair. It's a great pair of underwear. It'll change your complete perspective below the belt. Chillboys.com, what Declan said, exactly right. Final topic, John Merrill, defenseman, yeah. veteran, great mustache. It froze at the Winter Classic, and he, he looked like a character from the North Pole in a Santa Claus film. Three-year extension worth $3.6 million, and um, average annual value $1.2 million per year. Here's why I like this one. Because, I mean, he is, you know, he's done a nice job. I like this one because this guards against the Ian Cole. Oh, yeah, he was pretty good. Let's re-sign him. Oh, he's gone now. So, like, this is the, the our last two topics, Dex. They're not sexy topics, but to me, they're smart, serviceable moves yep. that, 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 um, that speak to an understanding of what you want from this team if you're, well, Probably most importantly, in this case, Bill Guerin, right? The yeah, the Wild have certainly gotten more out of John Merrill than than they thought, and I do think that what we're seeing from John Merrill isn't something that's going to translate well into his 30s from the play that he's doing uh, or providing. That being said, if you can lock up a nice bottom six guy for 1.6 million, you take that. Again, don't don't be splitting hairs over how are they I don't locking think up? Are, though, right. Not necessarily, but you're giving a multi-year contract to what is a bottom pairing defenseman. Yeah, it's like a he cheap, is. He's a bottom pairing defenseman, but it's a cheap, affordable, good, yeah. nice contract. And it gives you solid depth there. Um, if all things go c- according to plan and Kalen Addison's co- uh, contributing to this club full time by next season, and you have John Merrill to round things off, those are good problems. The Wild have always put a nice emphasis on their defense. John Merrill earned that contract. He's a nice player. Do you have a feeling Kalen makes them nervous with the defensive part of his game? Maybe. I don't know. I just don't. I think it might be similar to Rossi. You know, I just don't know if it's all there yet. But, you know, dumb. Like you should know. be ready by now. Sure. But, you know, Marco, was, I don't think that about. But that was, I mean, that was Matt Dumba for years. 
I mean, that, that exact idea that you just said. That was Matt Dumba for years. So, And, and he has found his defensive game. So, I, no, I, I don't think it's uh, much of a cause for concern. I don't think it's that big. But good for John Merrill. Good for John All right. Merrill. All right, we are done here. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back at some point soon because the Wild Abe is going to play again. They're going to play the Ducks. It's going to be great. It's going to be a game. And then, like you said, on Monday, they've got a matinee that I hope to God does not get canceled. Uh, Dex, before we go, tell people how they can help us, tell people how they can consume more of our content, um, all that good stuff. Yeah, if you uh, like your Minnesota sports content, hit the subscribe button right here on our YouTube channel. We provide daily Minnesota sports entertainment on the Vikings, on the Wolves, on the Wild, not necessarily the Twins right now. Uh, but if you like your Minnesota Wild good. content, we'll be back, we'll be back with them. Uh, so if you like your Minnesota hockey content, that's Judd Zolgat. I'm Declan Goff. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. The Score North app is a central hub for everything we do. But yeah, hit that subscribe button for daily Minnesota sports entertainment. Judd and I will be back to break things down uh, soon enough. For Judd, I am Declan. Pass, shoot, score.